the two exerts perceive the division of the soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intention of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but are all naked and exposed to the eyes of him whom we must give account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. And sons of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every respect has been tempted as we are. Oh, yet without sin, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You see, there is a solution on our uh, issue of our soul. Okay? There's the power of the word. Okay? Sinabi na ni Lord that it's the blood that, kaya when you go to the court, when the devil is accusing you, of every soul wounds that you have, you can go to the court and you can plead the blood of the Lamb. We also discussed about the dunamis, the power. The power that is available in us. Sabi ni Lord, when sin abound, grace abound. So grace is not a license to sin. Grace is a power to overcome sin. Nakuha niyo po. And when sin abound in us, the grace will become super abound in us. And then, hindi lang yung, yung power na yung available. God has leave us a uh, communion. Di ba sabi niya, do it as often as you can. Okay, if I were you, you can do it every day. Before you meal, you, you can have communion in your family. Why? Every time you take that communion, it brings healing to your soul. And then we also talk about the light of Christ. The light that is in us. And sa science po, they already proven na yung ating red blood cell ay merong this shape, maliit, microscopic, at may maliit na light na naandoon. And many scientists believe that is still the light na naiwan kay Adan after the fall. Okay? That's why Jesus is a sinless man. Kaya nung siya umakit doon sa bundok, the mountain of transfiguration, nagliwanag siya. Saan galing yung liwanag? Inside of him. Kaya nga, we have a hope that we will be glorified like Jesus. Ano ang sabi ng Colossians 2.27? Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Lord will bring us into that what? Glorifications. So, ngayong umaga, ang ating uh, pag-uusapan ay Tungkol naman doon sa pangalawang reason why our soul ay na, nasusugatan. The first reason, di ba, is the sin that we made. Sin na nagpartake tayo, yung something in common with the devil. John 14.30 says, sabi niya, the devil is here but I have nothing in common with him. Or, I have nothing that belongs to him. So the devil cannot claim anything from Jesus because Jesus has nothing in common with him. He has nothing that belongs to the devil. So that's why when he died, the devil cannot stop him from hell. He has to raise. He has to, re to be resurrected. Why? No power that can hold him in hell. Niyo po. Yan po ang kalahagan ng resurrections. And that resurrection, we too can experience the same. Nung tayo po na born again, na-experience natin ang power of resurrection up to now. Nakuha niyo po. Sabi ng Bible, when Christ died, we died. When He rose from the dead, we also rose from the dead. Kaya pag ang isang tao ay na-born again, 
tinanggap niya ang Panginoon bilang kanyang Panginoon tagapagligtas at kinilala niya by faith. Ang ginawa niya doon sa krus na Kalbaryo, he too will experience that resurrection. Question, bakit kasama tayong namatay? Kasi ganito po yan. In the Old Testament, there is what we call a covenant of law. And all of men are what? Under that covenant. Nakanya po. And the only way na ang covenant ay mananalified o marisen is kapag namatay ang isa. Parang mag-asawa. Pag ang babae ay buhay ang kanyang asawa, hindi siya pwedeng mag-asawa muli. Nakuha niya po. Inexplain niya ni Paul sa Romans chapter 7. So nung si Kristo ay namatay, kasama tayo ay matay. And when he rose from the dead, we rose from the dead. So we are now rescinded, na rescind na yung covenant natin doon sa law. And we are now free to make covenant with another. Nakuha niya po. Kaya ang tawag sa atin, Bride of Christ. We were married to the law of Christ. We were married to a new law that is the law of spirit and life. We are not bound anymore sa law of the law of Moses, which says na if you obey the law, you will be blessed. If you disobey the law, you will be cursed. So, wala na tayo doon sa ano sa resulta ng curses na yon. Nakuha niyo po? Pinalaya na tayo because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. All of these are by faith. You have to believe by faith. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya pag tinanggap niyo ang Panginoon, you are going to experience the power of His resurrections. Okay? Kaya may mga bagay na hindi niyo na ginagawa, na ginagawa niyo, ngayon hindi niyo na nagagawa. Why? There was what? A resurrection that happens in your life. But the real mystery is this. It doesn't happen in one time. Oh. Hindi yan isang buhos lang. It's a process ang ating sanctification. You have to walk by faith. Now, pag tayo nagkasala, tandaan po natin, our soul got wounded. Nasasaktan. At normal po, sabi ko sa inyo, normal, na maghanap ka ng ano, Relief doon sa pain ng kaluluwa mo. And God is offering. But because of our ignorance at lumaki tayo na ang ating tinatakbuhan ay ang kaaway, we embrace whatever He gave us. But later on, after we embrace those things, we realize na ano, hindi rin pala nakapagdudulot ng ano, ng pangmatagalang solusyon sa iyong Uh, sugat sa iyong kaluluwa. That's why I can conclude that everything, every needs is created by God para tayo ay lumapit sa Kanya at doon natin hanapin sa Kanya because He is Abba. He is Father. Means He is the source of everything. If He is the source of everything, well, we can thank God that He can provide everything that we need. He is our Father and we are all His sons. And the second area is what? The sin of our forefather. At ang tawag dyan is what? Generational curses. And the question is, how are we going to deal with these generational curses na uh, namana natin? Pwede po? So, It's a series and this morning we'll just give you the introduction and how these curses operate in us. Let's talk about the nature of man. Mankind is God's most marvelous creation and in fact the only one made in his image and his likeness. All of us were created in the image and the likeness of God. Kaya ang tawag sa atin, the imager of God. We are all imager or we are all representative of God. Di ba? Tawag pa sa ating Lord, ambassador. Okay? So, we are His representative, the representative of the invincible kingdom 
to a visible kingdom here on earth. Kaya nga nung pinag-create niya ang tao, he has gave man what? Sabi niya, let them. Okay? Let them have dominion. Okay? So that is the law of dominion. We are unique beings and we have a special importance in the scheme of creations. And we are designed to rule and govern the planet Earth as God's powerful ambassador. Tandaan niyo po, ang purpose ni Lord is what? To rule the Earth. Being born again, tandaan niyo po, the context of born again in John 3.3 3 is not about going to heaven. Jesus is telling it to Nicodemus why he need to be born again so that he can operate operate in the realm of the spirit how he can operate in the kingdom of God nakuha niyo po well given na po yung pagpunta sa langit pag namatay ka na hindi pa na fulfill yung plano ni Lord sa lupa kaya nga po ang tawag sa kingdom of God is already but not yet it's already here but it's not yet manifested in the whole creation It's in us. The kingdom of God is in us. But it is not yet manifested in all of the creations. Why? God is waiting for the sons of God na mag-manifest. Because it is the glory of the sons of God that would restore the creation back to normal. Nakuha niyo po? So however, we have an enemy to that process. And that is sin. Because of sin, mankind lost his territorial authority over this planet. So the real issue and why Jesus came here on earth is to deal with sin. Nakuha niyo po? And ibalik sa atin yung glory. Kaya di ba sabi ng Bible, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We don't lose religion. What we lost is what? The kingdom of God. What Adam and Eve lost is the kingdom of God. Sin entered the human bloodline and began to spread like flake throughout the biological network of human existence. Sin is not only in, in our mind. It's in what? It's in the flesh, sabi ng Bible. And that flesh is, we can say, it's, a, it's in human genome or DNA or genetics na andun po yan nasa blood di ba last time I explained to you about the blood oh our personality it's in the blood it's in our DNA na andun po yan all appeared to be lost and this is the question can mankind ever regain his noble authority on this planet And can he once again have eternal relationship that he needs with his creator? Yun lang tanong. When we fall, when Adam and Eve fall, lahat ng tao from him down the line, lahat tayo ay ano, sinners at nagkasala. And the question is, can we re ever regain it? Our status before? The answer to this question is yes. And through the restorative power of Jesus Christ. He already did it 2,000 years ago. What we need is what? Faith. From olden days to the present, men and women from all walks of life have inherently understood that the past does affect the present and future order of things. Alam nila na yung past natin, it affects the future. Example. Di ba? This inherent knowledge may explain why the expression like father, like son is both common and universal. Bakit sinasabi niyo ba? Oh, like father, like son. Mga kapatid, hindi lang mukha ang namamana mo sa magulang mo, including sin, that had been passed down from generation to generation. Like for example, the sin of idolatry. It's been passed down. The curses, the effect of that idolatry is from third to fourth generations. At paano yan matatanggal? Di ba? 
and the recent amazing advances in biochemistry, quantum physics, and genetic science have given us understanding about the DNA or the human genome. Scientists are deeply owed by the amazing divine complexity of the human genome. Okay? Or scientists and even biochemists are baffled by the amount of information about a person, character, ability, inherent destiny can be obtained in a single strand of DNA. Yan po ang nakaka-amaze. Kasi noon wala pang DNA. Eh. Kaya maraming kaso ngayon ang mga na, maraming mga nakakulong, nakasuhan. And because of that DNA, ngayon nabuksan yung mga kaso uli at na found out na yung mga ebidensya pa nila, hindi pala nila DNA yun. Kaya yung iba, mga napawalang sala kasi hindi naman pala sila ang gumawa ng krimen. At karamihan mga ebidensya ay ano, circumstantial lang. But the moment they use the DNA, it will prove na it's either you or other person ang andun sa crime of the sin. Sin of the crime, I mean. Human genome is a rich instructional reservoir containing all that is needed to be known about the person whose DNA is under investigation. The human genome or DNA is the sum, is the sum total of an organism DNA. So pag pinagsama-sama mo yung mga DNA ng isang organismo kasama tao, ang tawag nila doon is human genome. Okay? And sin is in our human DNA. Kaya nung si Jesus Christ ay namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, and because it's His blood, di ba sabi sa Leviticus, it is only the blood can cleanse the soul. What happens is our soul has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And we have to what? Use the ano? The power. The power of the Lord. Di ba? It is what? By faith. We said, Lord, by faith. Oh. Understanding the dynamics of DNA within the human genome, scientists can explain to some degree many things about the person. Kaya di ba, pag nag, nagkasakit ka, punta ka sa ospital, ang unang ginagawa ng doktor, kukuna ka ng dugo, and i-examine ang dugo. Why? Life is in the blood. Hmm. Oh, For example, why does a fourth generation grandson of a dead great-grandfather who was an alcoholic when he was alive, also struggled with the same addiction to alcohol as his ancestor. Magtataka ba kayo? Hmm. Or, the Bible is clear that all life forms have a spiritual template behind their visible dynamics. Everything that was we can see by our naked eye is what? There is a spiritual template Ano yung spiritual template? Ano ang proof niya na mayroong spiritual template yan? Ang lahat ng creation ng Diyos. Sabi ng Panginoon, Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the Word of God. Remember, the Word of God is spirit and it gives light. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So everything the word and everything in it is was it was framed by the word of god so there is a template a spiritual template ang lahat ng bagay kasi everything was created by the word of god 
And this above passage of the scripture is clear that every visible element in creation is a byproduct of a loftier spiritual technology. Mas mataas na technology ang gumawa niyan. It's behind every element, visible element in creation. Ibig sabihin, merong ano, uh, spiritual component ang lahat na pinanglilika ng Diyos. This means that all visible elements in creation, including our DNA, the human genome, are influenced by the dimension of the spirit world. I'm not saying that everything has a spirit, but it is influenced by the dimension of the spirit world, including our DNA. That's why when we sin, what happens? There was what? Genetic mutations. Nasira yung ating mga DNA because of what? Sin. This also means that the genetics of any person bloodline can be affected by God-created power. That's why when, we, when you come to the Lord, God will give you the power, the dunamis in Greek. And that dunamis what? Excellence of soul. So what happens when you come to the Lord and ask for healing, what happens to your soul? Your soul gets healed because your body is what? Connected to your soul. And most of our sickness, the root of that sickness is what? A wounded soul. Or it can be infected by the manipulation from demonic powers and other death agency. Kaya di ba, the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. At tandaan niyo po, the only way that the enemy can come and plant sickness in your DNA, in your physical bodies, is what? When he has a legal right. At ang mabigat ko, ang legal right niya is what? Generational. Kaya dapat madala mo ito sa korte sa langit because these are spirit. And the only way to deal with the spirit is what? Go to the courts of heaven. Hindi naman po pwedeng sigawan mo. Di ba? We gone through a lot of deliverance. Tama po? Oh. And after deliverance, after two months, three months, balik uli. Bakit merong ano? Resurgence or merong ano? Uh, recurrence yung, yung sakit. Isa lang ibig sabihin. Hindi na healed yung ano? Yung soul. Kaya di ba, laging sinasabi ni Jesus pag siya nagpapagaling, sin no more. Why? Because if, if you continue to sin, your soul get wounded again. And when that soul get wounded, sickness can come back. So, the genetics of any person bloodline can be affected by God's created power and and also can be created can be manipulated by the demonic powers genetic mutation that is caused by demonic manipulation of the human genome is the underlying essence of this teaching kaya po tayo merong generational sin kaya yung sin ng ating mga ninuno na papasa pati yung effects nito napapasa sa mga ano sa mga ang kanila down the line oh. the diabolical manipulations of the human genome by the demonic powers over many generations is the genetic phenomenon commonly known as generational curses kaya itong series po na ito ang pag-uusapan natin is paano natin mabibreak itong general generational curses na nasa ating bloodline. Diba? We, the last time we talk about yung personal sin natin, yung mga idol sa ating mga buhay caused by our sin. Ito naman, the idols that is in our bloodline that caused by generational curses. By definition, Generational curses are curses or iniquities that are perpetuated 
in repeated behavior cycle over several generations. Sa aming lahi, oh, yung great-great-grandmother namin is a priest. Tapos, down the line. Priest na nag-asawa. So down the line, yung tawag dito, yung sin of immorality is running down in our bloodline. Na ano yung ibig sabihin? It's a repeated behavior cycles. And the phenomenon of generational curses has nothing to do with learned behavior. But traces pattern of behavior on a subconscious and genetic level. Na andun yan. Kaya pansin niyo sa buhay niyo. Meron kayong mga kasalanan na kahit nasa harapan niyo, na andyan, hindi kayo natutokso. Why? It is not in your bloodline. Pero may kasalanan na kahit malayo, you're being easily drawn and tempted from that sin. Why? It's part of your generational sin. Kaya meron tinatawag nga, no? familiar spirit. What is that familiar spirit? Comes from the word family. Oh, it's been there. Oh, nasa pamilya mo, binabantayan ka. How else do you explain the circumstance of a woman who grows up under abusive father but end, up, end up attracting abusive men? Oh, may mga lalaki na lumaki sa magulang na binubugbog ang kanyang nanay. At ang sabi niya, paglaki ko, never na ako ay bubug o sasaktan ko ang asawa ko. At magugulo ka after the idols. He's doing the same thing like his father did sa kanyang nanay. Oh. Lumaki siya sa magulang na babaero ang tatay niya. At ang sabi niya, never akong mag-aasawa ng babaero. But you can see, in, in, she ends up of a womb of a man na babaero. Paano nangyari yun? How do you explain that circumstances? Di ba? I wish I could say that born-again believers cannot be affected by tyranny of generational curses. How I wish. Pero hindi ho eh. All of us are affected by this. That's why God, by His grace, provided us. Kaya sabi niya, let us draw near to the throne of grace. Merong provision ang Diyos. I am a former victim of this deceptive genetic phenomenon. I'll not go to the detail. I saw widespread genetic patterns of behavior in my own natural lineage bloodline that I hated intense, intensely but end up doing it myself. For some of these behaviors, the fact that I was born again, God-fearing, child of God, did little to stop these subconscious behaviors in me. And I believe some of you is the same thing. Sa akin, nahuli nga lang ako. Siguro yung sa inyo, Sekreto, kayo lang nakakaalam. Pero ako, sa case ko, nahuli ako. The billion dollar question that we'll attempt to answer is simply this. Is there a guaranteed spiritual technology for destroying, overturning, and reversing demonically engineered mutation in the human genome? Meron bang paraan? Paano ma-reverse yung genetic mutation na nangyari sa atin dahil sa kasalanan? Meron po. But we, before we can go to the details on how, let us see first kung anong sinasabi ni Lord sa mga bagay patungkol dito. First, let us remember there is an ancient pathways sa Tagalog dating daan. <laughs> Jeremiah 18.15 Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity. 
they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not catch up. So God accuses his covenant people, covenant people of the following. Number one, forgetting him. Sabi niya sa mga Israel, this is the three sins that you have committed against me. Number one, you forget me. You have forgotten me. Okay. Second, you worship worthless idols. Oh. Kasi yun na po yung byproduct noon. If you have forgotten the Lord, the next thing that you will do, you will look for idols. Nakuha niyo po? And every idols, di ba, sabi ko sa inyo, when your soul got wounded, you look for uh, comfort or relief from the pain of your soul. And that's why you turn into idols. And number three, you walk walking in pathways that have never been proven in context of his predetermined will for the lives. That is what it means by ancient pathways. Sabi niya, you forsake these pathways. Because remember, the ways of the Lord is higher than our ways. Diba? His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. God has a predetermined ways. Okay? Example, you are going to one place na hindi mo alam. Yung daan. Anong gagawin mo? You have a cell phone. Anong gagawin mo? Ways. Oh, di ba? Pero kung minsan yung ways, ways of time. Kasi kung minsan yung ways, mali-mali yung binibigay na direksyon. But normally, the ways will give you the right direction. He will give you the roads. Kung ilang uh, roads ang pwede mong daanan, mamimili ka. So the moment you set the roads, and he will tell you how many kilometers and how many minutes. Right? And then tatakbo ka na. The moment you deviate from that roads, mag-iingay yung ways mo. Sasabihin nyo, turn left, turn left, turn left. You turn, you turn. Oh. Di ba? Kaya madalas sasabihin mo, marunong ka pa sa akin. Oh, di ba? Pero sabi ng ways, no, you agree with me. Nandito ka dadaan. Kaya hindi ka pwedeng ano, uh, mag, mag-devate ng iyong daan. Yan din ang sinasabi sa atin ni Lord. God created an ancient pathways wherein we should walk. Nakuha niyo po? God tells the children of Israel that they had forgotten about the ancient path that God had established for their benefit. Kailan nito? Even before the foundations of the world. Kaya tingnan nyo, bakit ang mga tao ay gustong-gustong pumunta sa manguhula? What drives him to go to manguhula na alam naman niya hindi totoo? Because deep inside of our hearts, we are seeking for that ancient pathways. We want to know what God has called us to do. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya maraming mga Christian, naghanap ng propeta. <laughs> na mag-direct sa kanila kung ano yung direksyon na gusto ni Lord. Di ba? There's nothing wrong of a prophet, but the Lord is telling us na ang propeta is what? A confirmatory lang. Why? God will speak to you. He's going to speak to you. Where are you going? And the primary reason is because all of creation was created on God's eternal wisdom. Wala kang magagawa. You're created in the eternal wisdom. And in your DNA, nakalagay na dyan yung lahat na gusto ni Lord na mangyari sa buhay mo. The only problem lang ay nagkaroon ng kasalanan. Your DNA was what? Nagkaroon ng genetic mutation. Instead na you desire God, you desire the things of this world. Nakuha niyo po? We were created in the image and the likeness of God. Kaya dapat ang ating dinidesire, yung mga bagay na tukul sa Diyos. Pero pag tinignan mo ang sarili mo, bakit ang dinidesire mo yung mga bagay na walang kaugnayan sa Diyos? It's because of what? Genetic mutation. Because of sin. So no amount of technological and scientific discovery can override or overshadow the incredible wisdom of God. 
Kaya sabi ni Lord, bumalik ka doon sa dating daan. Doon sa ancient pathways. Kaya nga sabi ni Dr. Aiko Hormans, ang kanyang favorite expression is, science is catching up with the Bible. Before Ferdinand Magellan or Columbus discovered that the earth is round, it's already mentioned in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Job. Remember, Job is the oldest book. Sabi pa niya, he hangs the earth upon nothing. Uh, kaya bago na discovery ng mga scientists, biochemist ang mga tungkol sa DNA, the Lord already knew about it. It's already there. Another word na ating dadaanan as we go on is the word divine predestination. Sa Bible school, pinagdidibatihan itong predestination na ito. Kasi merong belief sila, they are Calvinist, yung isa naman Armenian. Okay? Ang sabi ng Ephesians 2.10 sa Amplified Version ay ganito, For we are God's own handiwork or workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus or born anew that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking facts which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Nakita niyo po? The word predestination in English is a two words. Pre means before and another word is destination. So simply, pre divine predestination is to set the destination beforehand. Kaya po katulad ng example ko sa inyo, you're going to travel to an unknown place, hindi mo kabisado, hindi mo alam, what do you do? You use the ways. Yung application na ways. At yung ways, ituturo niya sa iyo ang mga daan na pwede mong daanan. Okay? So when you set that before you travel, you are safe that you're going to that place in that time sa ganitong oras. At makikita mo doon yung mga road kung alin yung walang traffic. And when you set that road, hanggat meron kang internet connection, you just follow the road and you're going to reach your destination. So divine predestination is to set the destination beforehand. That's why sabi niya, he has been chosen as even before the foundations of the world. That's why sabi ni Paul in Ephesians 2.10 tell us that we are God's workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God had predestined for us to walk in. So he has a predestined plan for you that you need to walk in. It is written there in your DNA, mga kapatid. How did God pre-program us to walk in that ancient paths that he had prepared for us from before the foundations of the world? Di ba? It's a mystery. And now hindi na. Kasi ng biochemistry, genetic science, they discover that it is written in our DNA. Even your personality is there in your DNA. God deposited His instruction concerning the fulfillment of His eternal purpose in our DNA. Kaya ganyan po, ka-intricate ang tao, ang creation ng Diyos. Before Adam and Eve committed high treason against God, before they sinned against God in the garden, they had the best DNA of any human being who has ever lived on earth other than Christ. Okay? They have the best DNA. It's written there in their DNA, the plan and the purpose of God. And Adam's Eve original DNA was an amazing reservoir of divine revelation concerning their future destiny. Kaya, tingnan niyo po. Kung si Adan at Eva na perfect and they are in a perfect place that is Garden of Eden, naloko pa. Paano kaya tayo ngayon na mga born again na? Pwede pa rin ba tayo maloko? 
Yes. Kaya nga sabi ng Bible, even in the last days, sabi the last days, even the elect will be deceived. Oh, kaya hindi pwedeng magano, mag, ano ba tawag doon? Uh, maging kampante. ba? Diba? Kaya nga sabi ng Lord, I give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be the one that would guard us, that will guide us in all the truth. Ephesians 2.10, God in His genius planted the ancient pathways inside the human genome or DNA. It is written in your DNA. His ancient path. Before they fell from glory, Adam and Eve, the first kingdom ambassador did not need the services of a prophet to tell them what they need to do for God. Some of you would be, huh? Yes. The truth is, Adam and Eve doesn't need a prophet. Why? They can talk to God. Diba? They can talk to God in the cool of the day. Oh. They have the perfect revelations inside their DNA. The ancient pathway is there in their DNA. Kaya hindi nila kailangan ng propeta. This is because the mystery of God's perfect will for their life and destiny are, was deeply encoded in their DNA. Pero sa atin ngayon, dahil sa kasalanan, nagkaroon ng genetic mutation. Natago yung, yung ancient pathway. Their DNA was just like a microchip of a supercomputer with deeply embedded divine instruction and spiritual pathways. Pag bumili ko kayo ng computer, mayroong processor. At doon sa processor, yun yung nagkukuman how the computer will operate. Yung cellphone nyo, may mga processor yan. Sa ating din po, sa ating DNA, mayroon yung microchip. Kaya anong ginawa ni Lord? Ni-restore back ito sa atin sa pamagitan ng Holy Spirit na nasa sa atin ngayon. Only an intelligent God is able to write such deeply embedded genetic instructions into His creations. It is not written by, you know, by scientists. It is only God who did this. Kaya ulitin ko sabi niya, because my people had forgotten me They have burned incense to vanity. They have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in paths in a way not cast up. Because of sin, we walk in a path na hindi galing kay Lord. Sabi ng mga forensic scientists and biochemists, will be, they will be the first one to tell you that the human genome or DNA is made up of millions of wires of connect or connective tissues called DNA strands. Marami yan. Simula sa buhok. These DNA strands are already encoded with deeply embedded genetic instruction that governs how a person behaves, desires, and function that were never put in the DNA by scientists. Anong ginagawa ng mga witches if they want to cast a spell on you? They get a strand of hair from you. Why? In your hair, there is a DNA there. Hmm. We would have to conclude that many of these genetic instructions are divinely embedded. But there was demonic breach on our human genome that forces us to fight with deeply embedded genetic tendency. That's why sabi ng Bible, the desire of the spirit always war with the, the desire of the flesh. Because in our flesh, in our DNA, nagkaroon nga ng genetic mutation doon. Instead na yung i-desire natin ay yung mga bagay tungkol sa Diyos, ang nadi-desire natin yung mga bagay na meron si Satan na nasa sa atin. Now, how do we going to break these demonic barricades? Okay? I'll give you a story in Matthew 8.28. Naalala nyo ito? Sabi ni Lord, when he, he has come to the other side into the country of Gerge, Gerge, 
gergesines. They're meant to possess with two men, possess with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. So, pinuntahan ni Jesus yung lugar na ito. At doon sa lugar na ito, dinadaanan, a gateway ito eh, spiritual gateway. May nakaposition doon na dalawang tao na possess ng demonyo. Kaya tao takot na dumaan sa lugar na yun. Jesus took his disciples across the sea into the country of the Gergesines. And when Christ got on shore, he took a pathway that was protected by two very violent demoniacs. Okay? And the devil, tindan niyo po, had invested two very violent and intimidating evil spirit in these two demoniacs. Naglagay siya ng pangyari ng demonyo doon sa dalawang tao na yun. Para ano? Bantayan yung way na yun. When Christ came to that region with a specific intent of challenging these two demonic powers for the right to this pathway. Okay? Why would the devil invest in stationing two very violent spirits to protect a pathway that was little or no value? Di ba? Puntod lang naman yun eh. Di ba? Simenteryo lang. Bakit? I truly believe that this pathway in the, in the country of Gergesines must have been a high spiritual value to both the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. Why would the devil put up an altar in the mountains in the Philippines? In the south, Mount Apo. In the north, Mount Pulag. In the west is Mount Hurao. Uh, in the east is Mount Hurao in Samar. In the east is Mount Mantalingahan in Palawan. Why would the devil put up something, a pathway in that place? Because it has a value in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of darkness. That's why we put a house of prayer in Mount Apo. And remember, house of prayer can only be called a house of prayer when there are people or priests who are offering sacrifices over that place. An altar can be an altar if there are priests who are offering sacrifices. So Christ Jesus would never have bothered to fight for a pathway that was no spiritual significance. Hindi niya gagawin yun na pumunta doon and fight these two demons. Hindi niya gagawin yun. If that pathway is not important. Same true what I'm saying. The prophetic significance of this passage is that it shows us that there are strategic spiritual pathways of the spirit that God embedded into our human genome. Because born again is not going to heaven is not just the hindi yan yung plano lang ni Lord it is the beginning kasi ang dami sa atin ang alam lang eh maborn again tama na no it's only the beginning you just your eyes is open into the kingdom of God diba unless a man is born of water or be born again he cannot see the kingdom in verse 5 says unless a man is born of water and spirit he cannot enter God wants you to enter and experience the kingdom of God. He wants you to bring in the government of God in the area of your influence. Kung nasaan ka. It's not just about going to heaven, mga kapatid. Kaya kung kayo nag-iisip na sana ma-rapture na, mga kapatid, I'm sorry to say, hindi pa ho. Alam niyo bakit? It is barely the beginning of the kingdom age. So those pathways can lead us to great spiritual, great spiritual and natural breakthroughs. If we recapture these genetic pathways that the devil guards jealously and violently, we can overcome these generational curses that have been passed us. The truth is, adami po mga Christians are experiencing mga tawag dyan, 
on. Generational curses, the effect of the generational curses. At pinagtataka nila, born again na kami, bakit ganito pa rin nangyayari sa amin? That's why we've been sharing to you about going to the court. Sabi ni Lord, let us draw near to the throne of grace. There is a court of grace and mercy. And in that court, the purpose of that court is to deal with your issue of your soul. Nakuha niyo po? And one of the ancient pathways that devil guards jealously is the spiritual pathway that contain our destiny code. It is written. Coded po yan na andyan sa iyong DNA. I truly believe that our destiny code is embedded in our genetics, in our genes na andun po yan, or in your human genome. The devil doesn't want us to rediscover the prophetic wirings of God's purposes and plans for our life. Ayaw niya yun. Because the moment we experience it, we will walk as a son. And when you walk as a son, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 20 and 21, the creation will be restored back. It is not by the glory of God, but by the glory of the sons of God. That's why I'm planning the Lord is to raise up many sons of God. God stored these plans in the original prophetic DNA. And what is that prophetic DNA that I'm talking about that is sonship? You are not a servant. You are a son. You need to discover it. You need to encounter it. How? You need to encounter God as a father. Remember in Rome and Matthew chapter 11, 27, no one knows the son except the father. And no one knows the father except the son and to whom he will reveal. So in other words, it's still the sovereignty of Jesus to reveal to us who the father is. You can never know God as your father until Jesus revealed it in your spirit. And that is what we call sonship. Because discipleship means walking as a son. Nakuha niyo po? A lot of people knows about God is our father. But why is it when things comes, na problem comes in their life, why they worry? It's because They never experience God is their father. Look at your apo or your anak. Di ba? Pag may kailangan yan, hindi naman niya nag-worry. Ah. Lalapit lang niya sa tatay niya, sabi niya pahingi. At wala naman siyang pakialam kung may pera yung tatay niya o wala. Ang alam lang niya, tatay ko siya, at pag ako'y lumapit sa kanya, meron siyang ibibigay sa akin. Di ba? It's an instinct of a son. Oh. And in the issue of holiness, you will not have a problem. Why? Like father, like son. Ibig sabihin, a servant will never become look like his master. Only son will look like his father. Why? You have the seed of God in you. You have the DNA of God in you. Sabi sa 1 John chapter 5 ba yun? You have the seed of God. In Greek, is sperma. That's where we get the word sperm. You have the sperm or the seed of God in you. So if God is holy, what will happen? Automatically, you don't have to, to have a problem about holiness. You get the point? Oh. So, ano ang measurement? of sonship that is in you. Kapag ikaw'y nagwo-worry pa, what is the barometer of the very love of the Father in your heart, in your life? The barometer is this. If you still worries at kayo pa rin ay natatakot, isa lang ibig sabihin. You're the piece of the love of the Father. Nakanya ko? 
if you are a son, hindi ka dapat matakot. Di ba sabi ng Lord, perfect love casts out fear. You too can recapture God's original prophetic DNA for your life. It's in the sonship DNA. You need to encounter the love of the Father for you to experience that sonship. That's the beginning. Mary restore yung ating ano. Gene, uh, muted na yung ating genes na nagmute, mute restore into sonship DNA. Next is the immutability of the ancient pathways. Unchangeable. I know that, sabi ni Solomon, Ecclesiastes 3.14-15, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth that men should fear before him, that which had been is now, and that which is to be had already been. And God require that which is past. Uh, basahin natin sa ESB. Ah, sorry. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14 and 15. This is one of the most one of the powerful scripture about this ancient of pathways. I perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done it so that people fear before him. That which is already has been, has been. That which is already has been, inulit pa niya. And God seek what has been driven away. Number one, the ancient pathways of God are undisputable. And it is eternal. And this wild divine instruction is in the human genome. That ancient pathways, eternal yan. It's forever. Kaya inilagay dyan ni Lord dyan, ano, even before the foundations of the earth. Kaya sabi ni Paul sa Romans, as a Corinthians, uh, the gifts of God are irrevocable. Hindi niya pwedeng bawiin. Why? He already wrote it in your DNA. Kaya kayo lang ang pwedeng mag-fulfill ng purpose na yan. Kaya tinan niyo po ang yung mga daliri. Yung mga, yung ano niyo? Ano ba tawag dyan? Uh, thumb mark. Unique yan. Wala yung kaparehas. Ganyan kagaling ang ating Diyos. It's written in our human genome. Okay. All the ancient pathways of God begin with God and are powered by God. Oh, magbukas ka ng cellphone, anong lalabas sa iyo? Kahit anong brand na lumab- ng cellphone mo, nakasulat sa ibaba, powered by Android. Oh, di ba? Your ancient pathways that was written in your DNA is powered by God himself. And all the ancient pathways of God are the foundational and governing principle of God that are embedded in the creation. Bumili ka ng appliances, there is always one, operating manual. And it will tell you how this machine operates. Nakasulat doon, embedded doon. Oh. Kaya importante yun, di ba? Kaso lang tayo mga Pilipino, hindi tayo nagbabasa ng operating manual. <laughs> Basta pakita ang gamit, on na lang. Tsaka lang later ako pag nagkaroon ng problema, tsaka ka lang magbabasa ng ano, operating manual. Diba? All the ancient pathways of God were designed to bridge the gap between heaven and earth. And to bridge the gap between eternity, time, and space. Yan ang purpose niya. Kaya nga isinulat na sa iyan. 
kaya si Adan at Eva, hindi kailangan ng propeta. Ngayon lang tayo, kailangan natin ng propeta. Why? Nagkaroon nga kasi ng genetic mutation yung ating mga DNA. Natago yung plano ni Lord. Sin and the devil, who is also a prisoner of sin, are no match for a man or woman who rediscovered the ancient pathways of God and build their life around this path, this ancient path. This is why the discovery of the ancient pathways of God in nature and in our genetics is the devil's worst nightmare. Kaya di ba sabi sa Bible? Magbasahin ko sa inyo. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Sabi niya, verse 6. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not the wisdom of the age, or of the rulers of this age, referring to the devil, who are doomed to pass away. But we impart the secret and the hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this. The ancient pathways. The book of the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil never understand it. Hindi din nila intindihan why Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became man. Hindi rin nila alam yun. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Oh. Sabi niya, none of the rulers of this world or the devil, this uh, Paul and sons of God, understand the wisdom of God. Actually, every prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ becoming man is coded. It's coded. Hindi sa eksakto yung mga prophecy na yon. Bakit hindi eksakto? Kasi nga itinago ni Lord kay Satan para hindi niya maintindihan. Kasi nga, kung alam lang ni Satan na yung death ni Jesus Christ ang magtatalo sa kanya, kahit dulo ng daliri ni Jesus, hindi nila pakikialaman. Nakuha niyo po. That's why the death of Jesus Christ became the devil's worst nightmare. At babangungutin siya ulit. Alam niyo bakit? Because every woman and man of God will start to discover their ancient pathways. And if we discover it and walk on it, mga kapatid, babangungutin muli si Satanas. Another word that we need to understand is the word foreknowledge. God's foreknowledge. Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 to 5. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and first and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. What is the spiritual element? that causes the ancient pathways of God to be immutable. Immutable means unchallengeable, unchangeable. Okay? The spiritual element known as God's foreknowledge. God's foreknowledge is what? Sabi niya, He knows the end from the beginning. Before God will create something, He knows the end of it. That is the basis of all his creation, including human being. Jeremiah 29, 11. Ano for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you future and hope. So it is his foreknowledge. God's foreknowledge is his inherent ability to know all things at any given moment. It is divine ability to know the end from the beginning. Kaya nga sabi sa Isaiah, he knows the end from the beginning. Before he do something, he knows already the end. That's how God create. That's in every creation of God, na andun yon yung foreknowledge na yun. Nakawa niyo po? That's why there is no experiments in anything that God ever does. 
tayo nag experiment tayo, di ba? Let's try. Let's try. But in God, no experiment. He never made mistake because everything he created, he has a foreknowledge of it, including our DNA. So the prophetic implication of God's foreknowledge are such that God never does anything outside the eternal counsel of his foreknowledge. Wala siyang ginawa na hindi niya alam ang katapusan. Alam na niya po. And that is the good thing of our God. And it happens to be He is our Father. It means that when God first created the human genome or the DNA, the divine instruction about our personality, our profile, potential, assignment, and destiny that God had inserted inside our DNA strands, it were all based upon His foreknowledge. That's why you are all beautiful. Lahat kayo guwapo at guwapa. Why? Because inside of you, the ancient pathways has been written, coded yan. And the only way that the devil can destroy it is what? Magmutate yung ating mga DNA na yun. Kaya, di ba, Instead na ang i-desire natin ay mga bagay tukul sa Diyos, ang dinidesire natin mga bagay sa mundo. Mga temporal lamang. Nakuha niya po. This means that we were designed to function without the aid of external stimuli such as prophecy or preaching. Originally po, you don't need prophecy or preaching like this. You don't need. Kasi you already knew it. Ando niya, nakasulat na yan. Kaso nga lang, because of sin, nagkaroon ng genetic mutation. Oh. That's why kailangan natin ng ano, preaching and teaching to reveal to us the things of God. Nakuha niyo po? But it is not the experience of most born again followers of Christ. Nakangailangan pa rin tayo ng propeta. Natapos lang nung National Prayer Gathering. And I know some of the people, including me, na nanood, I was expecting na, uy, ano kayo sasabihin ni Lord tungkol sa Pilipinas, especially ngayong eleksyon. At ang iisip ng mga pastor, sino kaya ang, ano, ang susunod na presidente? Di ba? Oh. Why we are asking that question? Because we know this guy, Reverend Sado, is a man of God. He hears from God. Oh. And not all of us have the same anointing na meron siya. Kaya nakikinig tayo sa kanya. We want to hear from him the prophecy. Di ba? About these nations. Oh. And unfortunately, wala naman siya binigay na specific na name. Oh. Kasi po, last June pa, we were been seeking the Lord kung sino yung uh, susunod na presidente. So we can bring it before the court and make petitions. And then, unlike in 2016, there were Christian na kandidato noon. So it's so easy, uh, mas madali noon yung aming pagsik. Okay? Second, personally, I had a, I called it, divine uh, experience with God about who is the next president. Even though I don't like it personally, but the Lord told me. Oh. Now, ngayon, I don't have that kind of experience up to now. What I only heard last June 2021 is this. He asked me a question, ano ang gusto mo? And then sabi ko, Lord, Ba't mo naman ko tinatanong ko anong gusto ko? Nagtatanong nga ako sa iyo. Well, tinanong niya ako, ano bang gusto mo? Eh Lord, sana, this time, 2022, Christian naman ang maging presidente namin. Uh, that was my question. And I was surprised, pagdating ng December 8 o January, 
naglabas ang ano ang COMELEC ng sampu at sa sampu na presidential candidate, tatlo ang Christian. O, oh, Dr. Jose Montemayor, Manny Pacquiao, and Pastor Ernie Abelia. Sabi sa akin ni Pastor Irving, Sir, may wisdom na si Lord dyan. We don't need to ask specifically kung sino maging presidente. Nagbigay na siya o oh, tatlong kandidatong Christian. What we need to do is only to petition this before the courts of heaven. So kaya ang I have the word na sabi ko, Lord, anong gagawin ko? Sabi niya, share to them about the courts and let them go to my court and present their petition because I am the one who will what? Choose the next president because that's what the Bible says. He, he is the God who changes the time and season. He removed kings and set up one. So, good news. Nasagot na ni Lord. Yung una kong panalangin. Last time I was in Manila, last week, Friday, I was, able, I was contacted by one of the staff ni Attorney Montemayor. I was able to present to him the courts of heaven. And he agreed and he wants to make petition before the courts. So dalawa na lang. Si Manny Pacquiao at si uh, Ernie Abelia. So, well, if they will not petitions, sabi ni Pastor Irwin, Pastor, pwede ba kami? Kami mag-petition kay Manny Pacquiao. Hey, let's try. Wala namang masama in trying because at the end of the day, we will not be the one that would decide who will be the next president. It's still the court of heaven. It's still the divine council. Sila pa rin ang magde-decide for the Philippines. Nakuha po natin. So ang ating trabaho lang as a body of Christ is what? To make petitions. Tayo ang petitioner eh. At sinasabi natin, Lord, ito ang gusto namin. And let us wait what will be the decision of the court. So in the, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plan to his servants the prophet. That's why in the Old Testament, even up to now, gumagamit si Lord ng mga propeta para sabihin niya yung kanyang plano. Bakit? Kasi nga po yung ating ano, uh, DNA, nagkaroon ng genetic mutation. Okay? Amos 3.7 only became necessary after the fall of Adam and Eve. Pero kung hindi nag-fall si, si, si Adam and Eve, we don't need prophets. Adam and Eve had not sinned in the garden and compromised their God-given prophetic DNA there would have been no need for prophets on earth. Nakuha niyo po? Man's original prophetic DNA or sonship contained every prophecy about his person and future. That's why when you are born again, the Spirit of God is in you. Kaya nga sabi ni Lord, the Spirit that is inside of you will guide you into all the truth. Kaya hindi ka madideceive. Kasi Andun sa iyo yung Holy Spirit. Second, yung Holy Spirit, pag nakareceive ka ng uh, tinatawag na personal prophecy, di ba? Mag-witness naman yan sa spirit mo kung totoo o hindi. Personal prophecy is only for confirmation lang ng nareceive mo na, na sinabi na sa iyo ni Lord deep inside your heart. Nakuha niyo po. Kaya if you receive a prophecy na hindi nag-witness sa spirit mo, kahit gano'ng kaganda yan, throw it away. Breaking generational curses under the order of Melchizedek is about supernatural restoration of man's original prophetic DNA, sonship, through the finished work of Christ. No other than. God's kingdom operates on the premise that all the answer to their problems and the future only found in rediscovering his ancient pathways that is coded in your DNA. God wired those paths into the fabric of creation eons of years ago. That's why he has a foreknowledge of everything. So mga kapatid, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. 
all things were made by him. And without him was not anything that was anything made that was made. We know from the scripture that Christ himself is the word that was in the beginning with God. And the Apostle John tells us that but all things were made by him. Everything was made by him, including our DNA. And without him, <coughs> without Christ, was anything made that was made. So the roots of everything and the origins of everything is the Lord Jesus Christ. This means that every credible law of the universe, including man's DNA, and all forms of matter, whether visible or invisible, were created by him and through him. Kaya nabagdi ko sa inyo kanina, everything has what? A spiritual component on it. Why? Nothing has been created outside Christ. So to ignore Christ in creation and his impact on all created material is a colossal mistake and miscalculation. And also this passage is, is the acknowledgement that Christ, the word of the living God, is the raw material that God used to create all forms of matter within the universe. Kaya nga, one of the most powerful doctrine in the New Testament is in Colossians 2.27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Nakuha niyo po? Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the roots of everything and the origins of everything is the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we don't acknowledge that Christ is the raw material behind all created life forms, we also have to conclude that Christ created all DNA inside of us. Kaya nga po, there are research about the vaccine that the vaccine altered our DNA. Ina-altered niya yung ating DNA. Marami na po akong nabasa. Kaya, I can conclude that this is the plan of the devil. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We would then have to admit that Christ, God's living word, is the very strand of DNA in our human gene. Kaya pag naborn again ka, literally, meron ka ng tinatawag na dugong bughaw or royal blood. His divinity upon our humanity. 2 Corinthians 4.10, ano sabi niya? Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord that Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. See? The purpose of God is not only to dwell in our spirit. He wants Christ, the life of Christ in our physical body. Since Christ is the raw material of all created life forms, including man's DNA, it follows then that Christ, the visible image of the invisible God, is the best solution to the healing of any medical or diabolical genetic mutations. That's why the devil has been pursuing this vaccination. Nakakatawa nga eh. DOH ay Department of Hula. Why? Naghula na daw siya, sabi niya, according to their statement, by the midst of May daw, babalik uli yung bagong variant ng COVID-19. Ha? Niloloko ba tayo ng mga tao na ito? Since February pa, level 1 ang Manila. Since February pa, nangangampan niya ang mga politiko. Ang mga tao, dikit-dikit, walang face mask. Bakit hindi nagkakaroon ng maraming ano? COVID report. Come on. Kasi ma-expire na yung ano eh, gamot, yung vaccine. Kaya kinakala magpabakuna kayo. Magpabakulaw na kayo. You see how the devil are 
binubulag niya ang tao. Tandaan nyo, I'm not against with bakulaw. But remember, this is an experimental drug. You don't know what is the content of this. Whether it is true or not that it can mutate your DNA. Ay, mabigat pong ano yan. Uh, accusation yan. Kung totoo yan. Ay, ayoko mag-risk. Mag Di ba? Christ can reconfigure reconfigure or reconstruct our DNA. And He can fix any anomalies in our genetic sequence by the supernatural imposition of His divinity upon our humanity. Kaya nga sabi ni Lord, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's why wag ko kayong matakot sa COVID-19. It is the fear that will kill you. Because the Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. The moment you receive the spirit of fear, Remember, that is a spirit. The moment you receive that spirit of fear in your heart, you lost your sound mind. That's why nagiging kang ano? Paranoid. Oh. Sabi niya, I know that whatever God doeth, it shall be forever. And nothing can be put to it or anything can be taken from it. And God do it and that men should fear before him. Ulitin ko lang ito. Yun. That which had been is now and that which is had to be to be had already been and God require which is past. King Solomon tells us that whatever God does is forever. If we want anything in our life to last and be successful, we have to build it around what God is doing. Never do something that God is not doing. Because it will not last, mga kapatid. Ano ang sabi ni Lord? I only do what I see my Father is doing. I only say what I heard from my Father. Because God is operating on the ancient path. This means that every action which does not have the fingerprint of God in its roots and origins will ultimately end in failure or lead into great prostrations. Even your ministry. May isang bata nagsuot ng polo. Ayun yung polo, di ba? May butones. And then, nakita nung tatay na mali yung pagbutones niya. Nakaganon. Sabi nung anak, di ba li daddy, pagdating niya sa dulo, tatama din yan. No? You have to repeat it from the very beginning. Kahit anong gawin mo, hindi tatama yung botones na yun. Kasi mali ang yung simula. Same true, even our ministry. The expression and nothing can be added to it in the passage above means since roots and origin are based on God's foreknowledge, they are beyond demonic and human manipulations. Those things that God has preordained for you cannot be Manipulated by any human or demon spirit. They cannot. Because the roots and the origin of that is God himself. Christ. There is absolutely nothing that we can do to improve on the quality of what God has already established in the tapestry of creations. Wala na. Finish na yun eh. Tinapos na ni Lord John. Ginawa na niya yun. He has already a foreknowledge all about it. It also explains why obedience is better than sacrifice to God. Nakuha niyo po? It's because it's already there. The roots and origins is Christ himself. Next, the expression that which has had been is now and that which had already been. There is absolutely nothing new under the sun, yung ibig niyong sabihin, that God has not already done in His Son. Wala nang bago. Na hindi, na, na hindi nagawa ng ating Diyos sa, kanyang, sa pamagitan ng kanyang anak. Everything has been done through Christ and by Christ. It also means that the devil has no fresh ideas to carry out his diabolical assignment in the earth and that he has not already tried in the past. Na tried na po lahat ng kanyang paraan to destroy the ancient path that was coded in our DNA. Ginawa na niya yan. 
nothing new under the sun. That's why the blood of Jesus is so powerful. When you go to the court and you plead the blood of the Lamb, walang magagawa ang kaaway. Every accusation that the devil has for you will be erased. Because this also means that there is a powerful divine antidote to the counteract, to counteract every form of genetic mutation that is demonically engineered. I do believe that. There is one. Kahit pa kayo yung nabakulawan, na, nabakunahan ng bakulaw, I can still believe if that bakulaw ay merong laman para ma-altered ang DNA mo, God can give you the antidote. Yung nangyari ko nga, pinadala ko ng ivermectin. Sabi ko na uminom ka ng ivermectin. Ayaw uminom. Sabi niya, tama na sa akin ang ustya. See? My, my mother is a devoted Catholic. He understands the power of the communion. Oh. That's why every day nagsisimba yun. Alam mo, dahilan lang yan. Mag-communion. You see? And I believe that God honors it. Kahit sa Catholic. Oh. The expression God require that which is past. Human beings normally like to run away from their past. Diba? Ayaw natin yung past. And they always assume that the best version of themselves is somewhere there in the future. But kay Lord, hindi. But in this case, but this is not the case with God. Why would God, who knows the end from the beginning, be so stuck on requiring the past from the present generation? Why? The reason why most human beings do not like reflecting too much on the past is because more often than not, we are the most ashamed of what we have done in the past. But not so with God. But si Lord Hinde, there is nothing God has ever done in eternity past for which he is now ashamed. Wala. God's best handiwork is already done. Even Jesus Christ, sabi ng Bible sa Revelation, Jesus Christ was in actually the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. Kailan lang na nangyari na siya ay namatay as a lamb of God. It took us over 4,000 years of human, human history to, fig, to figure this out. 2,000 years ago, di ba? He manifested as human, oh, born of woman, di ba? He died on the cross, but the Bible says he actually he was already a lamb that was slain even before the foundations of the world. Ano ibig sabihin noon? In the corridors of eternity, Christ was already the lamb slain. Namatay na siya. So because God has what? A foreknowledge of everything before he do something He already knows the end from the beginning. So before God gave us a visible demonstration of the eternal reality of the cross, in the spirit realm, Jesus Christ already alarmed that was a slain. Hindi ko lang alam kung paano ginawa ni Lord John. Because had Christ not been the Lamb of God, already slain in the corridors of eternity, before He came to the earth, His sacrifice on the cross would have been have a little value to us. Kung hindi siya namatay even before the foundations of the world, walang value o maliit lang yung value nung kanyang pagkamatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. This is because any sacrifice that originate out of the earth or earthly realm would have a very short leash on its redemptive powers. Maikli ang kanyang kapangyan na hindi abot para magligtas. Kaya tinan niyo po yung dugo ng hayop. Di ba? It only covers the sin of the people of Israel good only for one year. But when the blood of the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, pour out, nabuhos sa lupa at tinubos ang ating mga kasalanan, it is for eternity. 
if Christ's blood were earthly origins, it would have been limited in its redemptive ability to intercept both heaven and earth with the benefits of redemption. Kaya ang ginong ginawa ni Lord, in the past pa, He already become a lamb that was a slain. So from a genetic perspective, if Christ's blood was earthly origins, it could have it could not be used to heal the broken down genetics of the human race. Hindi pwedeng magpagaling ng human genetics. Kung yung blood na yon, the origin of that blood is earthly lang, without the spirit, it cannot. So, it will, we will end here. Kasi next week, we're going to talk about the example of, this, of the roots and origins of everything. We will see Abraham, Isaac, and Ismael. We're going to study about it. So today, we have discussed now the, the reality of God has an eternal purpose for you. He has an ancient path coded in your DNA. Kaya nung tayo nagkasala, anong ginawa ng kaaway, he mute, nagkaroon tayo ng genetic mutations. Ang tawag dyan ng Bible is flesh. Di ba? And the flesh is contrary to the spirit. Kaya kahit born again ang tayo sinasabi ni Lord, the things of the spirit is what? Contradicts with the desire of the flesh. And the desire of the flesh contradicts with the desire of the spirit. Kaya lagi natin sinasabi, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's there. And the only way that can heal our generational curses that is flowing in our bloodline is only the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? So today, let us come to the Lord and let's have our communion this morning. If you have uh, communion elements that you have na meron ka ngayon, atin pong hawakan ngayon at tayo po ay lumapit sa Diyos na siya po may lika ng lahat ng bagay. Everything is in Christ. Amen? Let us thank the Lord. For I received from the Lord that I also delivered to you to the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance. Lord, today we are remembering you, what you have done on the cross. Thank you, Lord, that you died. You become lamb, slain, even before the foundations of the world to make a redemption so powerful that even in the genetic level, Lord, everything that is uh, what the devil did, the sin did in our genes has been restored back because of the blood and the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father as we partake this bread that symbolizes your body, let healing come upon our night today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now partake the bread. In the same way also, he took the cup of the supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as open you 
eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord death until he comes. We thank you for the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we can go and enter the throne of grace and plead the blood of the Lamb from every accusation that the devil, that the devil has thrown to us in the court. And thank you, Father, that you said that if you confess our sin, you are just and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Bless us as we partake this blood, Father, this juice that symbolizes your blood. As I promise, Lord, we'll never thirsty again. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us give our offering, our tithes and offering. Remember, mga kapatid, the reason why we are giving our tithes and offering because we are all priests of God. We are all priests. And God made us a priest. And Jesus is our high priest. 